Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 41 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can use command line arguments in our C programs. So, what this allows us to do is when we're running our programs in let's say terminal and we would like to pass in kind of some values to our main method. So, uh, for example, in our program, we'd like to utilize different values that the user passes in before running the program. So, in terminal, we can specify different, um, different uh, arguments that we can pass into our program so that when we call our program, the program can take the arguments that we type in uh, terminal and it can use them in the program. So, um, it's kind of fun and uh, a little more terminal use for this tutorial. So, um, yeah. This is uh, this is going to be all about arguments. So um, basically, arguments are kind of the first two or the two parameters that we have in our main method, which I've avoided talking about until this tutorial. So uh, here's what they mean. So essentially, the first one isn't actually an argument or anything. Uh, the second part is the array of arguments that we pass in, but the first part is just an integer, and it's called argc, which all that really means is argument count. So argument count just means the number of arguments that we have for our main method. And our argument count always, um, you would think, starts at zero, or we have zero arguments, so our um, argument count would be zero. But every method, or sorry, every program that we create always has its first argument as um, the file path of our program. So um, that's uh, the, what the first argument uh, is. So the next part is um, where uh, we actually store all the variables or the um, arguments that we pass in. So it kind of looks weird. Um, I haven't actually covered what a bunch of these things mean or how this really works. But I'm just kind of going to going to give a brief overview. I'm like stumbling with speech here. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what this means. So uh, the const uh, basically just means that it's um, going to be a constant. So anytime you see the keyword const, it just means that it's not really a modifi modifiable value. So when we pass in our arguments, essentially they're just not going to change. So that's really what all that means. And we already know what a character is. It's just a character, uh, anything uh, in text, basically. And then we just kind of have this array of arguments, which just means that um, we have an array of string values that we can pass in. So uh, it just has um, all the arguments that we pass into our program. So that's really all that... Um, this uh, pro all these two parameters mean. Uh, I know this kind of looks confusing, but all it really means is that it's a constant, and char const char star really just means that they're constant values that are strings in an array. So you can keep it as that. So um, this the next part is essentially um, just how we're going to create our program to utilize arguments that we pass in. So let's say, for example, we're going to pass in two different values um, in our program, so two different strings uh, that we want to use. So we're going to create a printf here, and we're going to say something like, uh, for example, Yoda is the best Jedi ever. So, I don't know, you can, add, you can say whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to say. So, for example, I can say uh, percent %s, which will, which will be our argument, uh, it just means a string. So uh, whatever the user types in, we're going to be uh, using that as an argument, and that's what we're going to type there in a second. So uh, percent %s, that could be Yoda, and we're just going to say Yoda is the, and then another percent %s, if you don't like Yoda, maybe he's the worst Jedi ever. So now we can just say uh, Jedi ever. So now... Uh, we can pass in uh, the different arguments that we're going to use for this. So like I said before, the first argument, or uh, the argument at the zeroth index, is always the path of our program, or the program name, essentially. So um, all that really, what that means is that we're not going to be using the zeroth index, or the zeroth element in the array of arguments, because that would be the, f the name of the program. So any arguments that we type in are actually going to start at the, the first index of the array. So argv, and we're going to use index 1, which will be the first argument that we put into our program, and then that would go 
to this string. And then the next string, we want, of course, the next argument. So uh, arg and uh, 2. So that's um, all we're going to do for that. And that would set up so that the first two, uh, or the two arguments that we pass in our program, will go to these two values. So simple enough. So now let's do a little error checking, though, as well, to make sure that we have enough arguments. Because let's say, for example, we try to run this program, but we don't type in that we have two um, different, uh, we don't actually have two arguments, which would be a problem. So uh, we're going to check to make sure that we have enough arguments. So we're going to check our argument count. And since argument count has the number of arguments that we have, um, then we can check to see if it's less than three. And that means we obviously don't have enough arguments for our program. Because, again, we have the first argument, which would be our uh, name of the program or the file path. The second one would be the one that we pass in, and, or the first argument that we pass in, and the third argument would be the next argument that we pass in. So we need, we need our argument count to be at least three. So if the argument count is less than three, then we don't want to run our program, because uh, if we don't have enough arguments, then this is going to be, they're not going to be initialized values, which would be a problem. So let's just say we're going to print out to the user, you need two arguments. And that would just tell them that if they, you know, try to run this program, they're not going to be able to run it. So now uh, we're also just going to return a value of negative 1 when we go to do this. So um, that just means that we're not going to uh, run it, essentially, and we're just going to return negative 1. It doesn't matter what you return, but I'm just going to return negative 1. So um, now uh, that's pretty much all we really needed to do, and we just checked to make sure that we had all of our arguments. So now let's just do one more print s, or, or not print s, print f, and we're going to use a percent s, so we can uh, check to see what the um, value of our the first argument is, which is the uh, file path of the um, program that we're running. So here's the zero with index of the argument array, and it's going to return the um, name of the program. So now let's try to run this and see what happens. So as you can see, uh, this kind of just fails, and you can see that uh, you need two arguments. So it's saying to us that we haven't actually created the arguments that we say we're going to create. And that's a problem, because we obviously want that. So how can we simulate that in Xcode? Because when we run this, it just runs right away. There's no way of putting in arguments. So um, there is a way of simulating this in Xcode. And what we end up doing is just going down to over in the left corner here, we have executables, and if we click the little uh, down arrow to, or the carrot, or whatever you want to call it, I don't know, never know what these things are called, but um, I think they're disclosure arrows or something. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's disclosure triangles. Now that, that was bothering me. So anyway, uh, out of that way, uh, let's actually see how we can put in arguments to our program here. So um, the first thing, we just have to double click this, or you can right click it and say get info, does the same thing. And as you can see, it'll, you'll probably start on the general tab, but if you click over to the arguments tab, we can see that we have arguments right here. And hey oh ho, that's what we want to add to this program. So uh, what do we want to say? Well, we're going to say uh, we want to pass in Yoda as one of the things. And why is it not capitalizing? I don't know, there we go. Uh, apparently I can't type, and another argument we want is best. And let's just rearrange these so that uh, they're in the right order. So now Yoda will be the first argument that we pass in, and best will be the next argument. So now when we run this, we should get Yoda is the best Jedi ever. So now we can go ahead and close this, and we can close the little disclosure triangle if we want. Let's go ahead, build and run, and as you can see, it did work. And I'm just going to actually uh, clean this up a bit, throw a few black backslash ends in here so it doesn't uh, clog up what we're writing. Let's just rerun that. And as you can see, the first thing it does is it does work. So we did pass in enough arguments. And we passed in, um, yeah, so we passed enough arguments. The first or the zeroth index argument uh, is just the file path, as you can see here. So where the program is located. And then the next part, uh, Yoda is the best Jedi ever, which was what we added to our arguments in Xcode. So now, for the final step, uh, let's go see how we can do this in Terminal. 
So um, I actually want to go over to Finder here, and I also want to launch Terminal. So Terminal, uh, let's see what we got here. So um, we want to add our, um, we're going to do a few things actually that I didn't do in the first tutorial. One thing I didn't show you in the last tutorial was actually how to change the directory of your, um, your where your file is. And unfortunately, if you don't change it, you're saving your program in your, I believe, your user directory or your main hard drive. I can't remember. But anyway, you're saving your program uh, you're not in the same file of where your actual main.c file is. Your program is being saved. I, I can't remember. I think it's the user folder or it's the hard drive. I can't really remember where the file path is. But it's not being saved in the same folder that our main.c file is located, in, which we kind of want to do. So if you want to change the directory in terminal, you can simply do cd, which just stands for change directory. And right after that, you can just throw in the value of where uh, you want to add this. So uh, you can actually, once you find the folder that you want to add or change the directory to, you can just drag the icon of the uh, folder. Let me just zoom in to show you this a little better. So here's our lesson 41, and we can just drag the icon into our terminal. And there you go, you can see that uh, we just threw the file path of our folder uh, into our terminal. So now that we typed cd and we added the file path of where the folder is located, we can hit return. And now you can see that it changed uh, and now we are in the lesson 41 folder and that's where our program is going to be saved. So that's what we wanted to do. And now all we have to say is that we want to compile our program. So now that we're in the right directory, we just have to say gcc and we have to say the, the name of the file, which is main.c. And since we're in the directory that it's in, we're in the proper folder, lesson 41, and main.c is right there, so we don't have to tack on a huge file path. So gcc main.c, and now we want to label our folder some, or our file something, so or our program. I'm screwing up with my words here. We're just going to call it prog for a program, and as you can see, it saved the program into our lesson 41 folder, which is nice. That's what we wanted. And now we can go ahead and we can run our program. So let's go ahead and uh, we're just going to call our program. So again, it's just a dot and a slash. And we just put the, uh, the name of the program in. And now for arguments, all we have to do is do a space after the program name. And now the first argument we wanted to do is, uh, not yet I, but we want to do Yoda. And I'm like blending words together. Holy jumpins. That's not good. I'm losing my mind. But anyway, his name's Yoda, not Yeti or Joda or whatever I'm thinking. Um, so the his name is Yoda that we wanted to pass in parameters and or arguments, I should say. And the second argument that we wanted was uh, he's obviously the best um, Jedi ever. So we're going to hit return now. And as you can see, it returns the file path of where the program is located. And that's right here. And then we also uh, print out what we wanted. So we want Yoda is the best Jedi ever, and that's obviously true, and that's what we wanted to type out. So uh, we were successful. Now we can do the same thing again if we want, and we can do some different. So I could put in my name, and I could be the absolute worst Jedi ever, because it's true, I am no good Jedi. And here we go, we have Lucas is the worst Jedi ever. So. You can fiddle around with this, and as you can see, you can just type in some different uh, values. So let's try uh, just uh, let's try no arguments, for example. Let's see if our error checking is going to work. So as you can see, uh, this just says it failed basically, and it says right here you need two arguments. And I didn't put a backslash in in there, which I probably should have, but um, that's why it's appearing on the same line right after that, which doesn't look that nice. But anyway, you get the idea. We need two arguments, so it's saying to the user that you failed at life, and um, yeah, you need to abide by the rules here. So let's try just to put in one value, and as you can see, it still complains you need two arguments because we need two arguments. We don't we don't want one argument, we want two. So um, there you go. That's pretty much how we can run our program and pass command line arguments in terminal. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and it's uh, a little enjoyable to see how we can run a few more programs in terminal as well. So anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions or comments in the comments below. 
and please subscribe to the channel. I'm always creating more tutorials, and um, if you have any questions, you can also send them via the YouTube messaging system, or whatever you want to call it, and uh, I will always try to answer uh, any questions that you have. So um, I'll see you next tutorial.